X or non-X? This is a $100 question and I may have the answer for you. In this video, I'm gonna show you the result of the Ryzen 7 2700 in various benchmarks and a comparison with the Ryzen 7 2700X. The main difference between the two are the base frequency and the boost. The X version is a high beam chip and already pushed to the limit. If you didn't see my 2700X performance guide, stop this video, check it out and come back. There are very useful information there about the memory scaling that you must know before moving forward. Another important difference is the cooler. The stock cooler of the 2700 non-X is good, but not good enough for pushing it to its true potential, and also the noise levels are a bit higher. For the benchmark you will see in this video, I use two configurations. The first is a budget build with a Gigabyte AB350 Gaming Free, an RX 570, the G-Skill Flare X 3200 MHz C14, and of course the two CPU both cooled with the respective stock cooler. As a second configuration is my usual test bench, the Crosshair 7 with an RTX 2080, the same memory kit, the g skill x 3200 MHz C14, and of course the two CPU with, this time, a water cooling made by EK and Noctua fans, a full custom loop. You will see now the full results. I will add then some thoughts about the most important part, and then I will show you with the two motherboard I used, how to overclock this CPU. PCMark 10 Digital Content Creation tests the performance in video, photo and 3D content creation. It includes the following tests. Photo editing, video editing, rendering and visualization. You can find more information in the description below. The 2700X in this scenario is obviously in the first place for the better boosting capabilities. But if we compare the two with the stock coolers, the 2700 non-X with a mild and easy overclock to 3.9 GHz is only 2% below his bigger brother. With an high-end cooling and motherboard the difference is higher, but we are talking about a setup difference that costs more than both the CPU combined, is worth a 7% improvement, think about it. Corona Benchmark is all about memory, and since I'm using the same kit for all the configuration, the difference is almost none. Cinebench R15, on the contrary, is more focused on raw CPU power. The 2700 known X can perform quite well since we have 2 to 3% every 100 MHz, and with the adequate cooling, it can be overclocked very close to the X version. 
that usually can achieve a manual overclock around 4.2 GHz with premium cooling. Nothing to add here, different release but same behavior, higher all the core frequency, higher performance. Here is where the things get interesting. If you want to use this CPU also to play games, this is the integrated test in PCMart 10 Extended, basically is a 3 Mark 5 strike. With the RX 570 the two have around the same score, we are heavily GPU limited. With the RTX 2080 we see some sort of scaling but is mainly to the physics score difference. But now let's take a look to our real world scenarios. Counter Strike Go is very useful to represent eSport games, not so heavy on the GPU but very demanding for the CPU to have high frame rates. The 2700X lead the chart, but the non-X version is not too far behind, with enough FPS even for a pro player. World of Warcraft doesn't need much explanation, we all know that it's very demanding in terms of IPC, instruction per clock. Since it's still mainly single core bound, in fact, using a GPU that costs like 5 times more, it doesn't bring much more FPS. This is actually one of the hardest games for a CPU to run properly. With the new Ryzen's we should have a big improvement here, so if you are considering a Zen or Zen Plus to play World of Warcraft, well, just wait. As soon as I can, I will cover all the new Ryzen with World of Warcraft, and not only with a Gryphon run, but also in Dungeon and in Raid. Here we have a AAA game. Now things are different, most of the work is done by the GPU. As you can see, with the RX 570 we are strongly GPU bound, and with the RTX 2080 numbers are not much different. And as always, keep in mind the resolution and the frequency of your display, because if you have a Full HD display 60Hz, you don't need the X version and you don't need even an RTX 2080 to play this game. Now that you have seen what this 2700 can do, you may wonder if it's hard or not to overclock it. Let's see first the easiest example, a motherboard that supports LLC, so load line calibration, and with advanced control of overclocking, the ASUS Crosshair 7. As you can see here you don't need to do much. I like to keep things simple, so with the specific kit, the Flarex 3200 MHz C14 is very easy, just you set the DOCP standard profile, then since you have to do manual overclocking, the, one of the most important things is to set the load line calibration, which is fine here. With this specific motherboard, the best setting for a very stable overclock and uh, a stable V-core is to set level 5. It doesn't give you more voltage than you set and it doesn't drop. So, when you set load line calibration, you just go to the V-Core voltage, manual, and then here you can put, let's say, 1.375, which is the safe limit for a daily use. The memory is set automatically, and all you need to do now is set the frequency. So, core ratio. I pre-tested the CPU, so I know that this limit is 41, so it means uh, 4.1 gigahertz and when you set all of this you just click F10 so save and exit. To test the CPU you do exactly the same thing but my advice is to let this on auto and then you enter in Windows and use Ryzen Master to check if it's stable or not. So you can start easily to 3.9 on 4 gigahertz with this voltage you run a stress test like OCCT and then you leave it uh, let's say 5 minutes and you raise the clock by 25 megahertz until you reach some kind of stability uh, and then you will try again you will try again and, and repeat so at the end so keep in mind that keep everything the same just change the frequency once you do your test uh, let's say 1 hour of OCCT and you want to make the frequency stable you just go back in the BIOS and set the right settings, in my case it's 41. Alright, and now the not so easy part. 
We have a budget motherboard that is fine because it's a good motherboard, but it's not meant for overclocking and we have very limited settings to play with. This is typically what you will find. So usually you have to enter like advanced or classic mode in this case. If you go to frequency settings, you can modify the multiplier, set the XMP profile and you have to find something like voltage control, overclocking control, like in MSI motherboard and you just enter that and you will find something strange. I mean, if you're not used to overclocking and you expect uh, some number to type in, like the voltage at 1.375 like we did on the Crosshair 7, you won't find it here. And you won't find neither the load line calibration to stabilize the V-Core and you have to play with the offset. This is an offset, so you can subtract or add voltage to your default state of your CPU. With this motherboard, I saw that I have to add 0.3 volt to find the, the right value. But honestly, with this method, you have to type a setting here, go into Windows, load a stress test, check the voltage with a software like Hardware Info, and then go back in BIOS, to adjust the settings, go back in Windows, and so on. This will take time, so in my opinion, it's not worth it. My advice is to go into Windows, download Ryzen Master, and play with Ryzen Master. It's easier and it's safer. I will show you now how to do it. To overclock it in Windows, all you need to have is a stress test software, and hardware monitoring software like Hardware Info and Ryzen Master. So, the first thing you have to do is to check if everything is correct. So if you have a nice idle temperature, the voltage is correct, so it's not too much, because sometimes older BIOSes have uh, an overshoot to the voltage, and you will find really weird voltage here. And if it's the case, find the latest BIOS and go update that first. So everything is fine now, and you go to the Ryzen Master. You check a profile, you just select game profile, game mode, profile 1, the same. In this case, I have profile 1. Make sure that is not selected memory or any additional settings apart from control mode set to manual, all core and the core speed. So let's start with 3.7 gigahertz. Make sure all the cores are aligned, set the voltage you want to, to do, usually if you have the stock cooler you can't raise too much the voltage because the temperature will spike. So try a settings like 1.325 or something like this. So you set everything, 3.7 as, as a good start, a reasonable voltage and well, just click apply wait a bit if the system is responsive or not, go to the stress test and start. I use OCCT to do demos because it's very easy even if you are not very practical with these overclocking things. So you basically download this, this, uh, this software and it's like this, you click play and it runs. In case the system is malfunctioning, it will display here, like it's overheating, it have detected an error, so just click play and wait a bit. I suggest you to test every settings for at least five minutes. It can take time, but at least you are sure that you're not wasting your time. So let's suppose that this had run for five minutes and you finally want to raise uh, the, the frequency. So. Always keep an eye to the temp because it's better if it stays below 85 degrees. Don't worry about 85 degrees under load because when you do games or lighter tasks, you will not even reach near 85 degrees. Normally, if under stress testing you reach 85 degrees, in game you will have 55 or 60 degrees as maximum, even with the stock cooler. So you go here and you start raising. 
my suggestion is raising by 25 or 50 megahertz so you set the value you click apply you let the test running and you wait you wait another five minutes check the temp check the voltage check the voltage also in the harder monitoring tool because if you see here we have 1.32 and in the tool we have 1.262 this is normally when we have to raise the load line calibration settings to be able to set the voltage with the tool and to have the same real voltage in the motherboard but in this case we don't have low load line calibration so you cannot do that so we have to basically set some value wait and check again and adjust in this case everything is stable so I will raise step by step to 3.9 which is something that should be easy to achieve for almost every 2700 you can buy so even if your chip is not that lucky with the stock cooler this is more or less where you will land maybe if you're lucky you can hit 4 gigahertz with the stock cooler but honestly uh, it's hard because more or less the 2700 chip are being more or less the same way otherwise they could have been the 2700X so again you set the value you set the vCore you let the test run in if the test crash you just step back so if you try like 3 gigahertz 950 megahertz and is not stable go back to 3.9 and wait wait until the test is completed with at least one hour okay so this is at least the easiest way to test the stability of your system if you're playing something with the settings and the game suddenly will crash just try to lower a bit the frequency or slightly raise the vCore but don't go past 1.375 which is the safest daily voltages if you go above that you may have very high temperature temperature spike or even you can degrade your CPU and it will damage over time it's not likely that you kill the CPU but it will degrade so it gets unstable over time in a year or two so stay below the safe voltage and well that's it so once you find uh, the settings that are stable for you you just click save profile and then when every time you go into your system and you want the overclocking mode let's call it that way you open Ryzen master you select profile and you click apply when you reset your system you shut down your system and you boot up again you will find the system at default speed and this is fine because if the overclocking goes bad it just reset and you start from scratch without worrying to reset the motherboard or do things that may be complicated for you so find a good profile save the profile when you need extra power just click apply and you're done all right guys now you saw the numbers you saw how to overclock it and you know that there are hundred dollars difference more or less between the two if you are on a budget and you are fine with the numbers and you don't have a high refresh rate monitor you can leave it as it is with a normal good memory kit but if you are looking at extra performance and you're still on a budget just consider this CPU over the X version and to buy a nice memory kit like the Flarex 3200 MHz because the 2700X with a really cheap and bad memory kit can perform worse than the 2700X with a good memory kit and well tuned or if you don't like the noise you can invest that money in a better cooler an all-in-one or the latest Noctua that is a very nice cooler say that you know the drill like if you like it subscribe to the channel if you want and leave a comment or if you want some advice uh, just uh, join my discord server we are a small but very nice community uh, you are really welcome there and well as always see you in the next one you know what is free in the morning and i'm really tired if you hit that dislike button i will come and find you enter your bios and unclock your pc you've been warned <laughs>